So today we will discuss about two approaches of development communication. First is social marketing approach and second is entertainment education strategies. Both uh, strategies and or approach uh, are necessary to understand because in the time being it was found that the dominant paradigm and the, the two theories we earlier diffusion of innovation theory and modernization theory they were not able to deliver the result as desired so that's why uh, there was a need to change the approach or a strategies so that i mean the kind of uh, result communicator want that kind of result can be taken so that's why these two approaches were adopted and these two approaches again are uh, under dominant paradigm only because these two approaches were ap adopted to popularize the concept of dominant paradigm it is not that these approaches were had some another agenda or these two approaches are dealing with some other kind of development model the develop the whole idea was to promote capitalistic model of development and in this series these two approaches were adopted so what is social marketing approach over time diffusion theory alone proved inadequate as a guide to communication planning in development campaign the diffusion concept are imprecise and the diffusion model does not sufficiently account for recipient feedback which is crucial to development campaign success and as you know that the kind of communication model adopted under diffusion of innovation theory or under modernization theory the communication model was top down approach one sided communication there was no place of feedback and this was understood by the promoters of dominant paradigm they understood that uh, uh, without the feedback of recipient without the feedback of uh, uh receiver or community it would not be possible to get the kind of result they want right so that's why they adopted this social marketing approach until 1970s communication model reinforced the active source and passive receiver stereotype as i Uh, we we have already discussed that it was a one sided communication model whether where it was uh, uh un thought that uh, an active source the source who is very active who can understand the problem who can give the solution that will be active and receiver will be passive they will accept the idea passively this was the whole process and that's why we call it a uh, one sided communication or top down approach right so that's why communication campaigns whatever for any kind of social uh, uh, development or economic development whatever social campaign uh, were designed under all of those campaign used one way top down source to receiver transmission model with the belief that change would occur automatically once message is received ah because people felt and you know it the, the main thing is that it is uh, why it happened that you will find that uh, when you go to the classical model of economics uh, when capitalism started at that time there were uh, there was a um, economist uh, whose name was uh, adam smith and adam smith used to say that uh, you give the product to the market it will creates 
uh, it will create its own demand if any new product come uh, in market then certainly it will create uh, create its own demand this is what uh, earlier uh, economists used to think uh, and that's why uh, in communication also it was believed that uh, people don't have new idea so you will give them new idea people will ultimately accept that idea and adam smith theory was also failed in 1929 when there was a big depression in american economy or it it, it is a big depression in whole world basically the kind of recession we witnessed five six years back the same kind of recession uh, was happened in 1929 and that was called the big depression right so uh, and at that time it was found that no uh, um, i mean survey product cannot create uh, its own demand uh, if people don't have money so that's why government should also focus on creating jobs government should also focus on um, creating demands government should also start spending more so that people uh, when government spend what happen government will spend in building bridges building roads Uh, uh building uh, dams so if when government spends then certainly more people will get job and then they will have purchasing power and ultimately they will demand from the uh, market so this is what uh, then then after adam smith keynes came after 1929 or john bayard keynes keynesian theory it is very important and keynes said that no government spending is very much important uh, for keeping economy uh, sustainable or keeping economy robust so this is economic thing uh, I, i just uh, uh, discussed it because you must get an idea from where this all this communication model was getting uh, idea yeah. so that's why one way top down approach was adopted here also uh, that uh, and it was understood that no um, if you give uh, Uh, messages to the society and if you don't have feedback then certainly people will not get it but yes before under coming to this understanding uh, people used to believe that no it will uh, automatically people will accept the uh, idea and the change will occur so uh, the assumption in this model was that knowledge is missing link in the adoption what people believe that why people uh, are uh, not uh, uh, doing uh, a thing which is desired because they don't know they don't have knowledge once you give them knowledge they will certainly adopt that thing so this was uh, the assumption uh, the incorporation of social marketing techniques in 1973 emphasized the change in value system and knowledge is well as as well as behavior pattern of the receiver so the three tire uh, changing pattern one is the change in value system and knowledge also you will provide knowledge and then behavior pattern should also be changed and to do so social marketing approach was adopted okay so communication efforts both in first world and third world turned into science based commercial marketing strategies to disseminate ideas to promote social causes a process called social marketing uh you know i mean when we call marketing it means that the if like product come uh, product comes in a market then the kind of marketing strategy is adopted to popularize that product among users the same kind of strategy should adopted when you are trying to adopt social uh, when you are trying to popularize social messages so you will uh, you will market the social message uh, the messages will be marketed in a way that it is a kind of product you have to sell the social messages it is not like that you are just giving them and you believe that people will ultimately accept it no you will have to popularize that idea like a product like you, you are going to sell that product right so that's why it is called social marketing it means marketing of social messages uh there are various examples uh, campaign to discourage tobacco you must be going to theater would be 
seeing the advertisement related to uh, tobacco, no, no, no use tobacco, and uh, some other uh, uh, advertisement also, so advertisement also, like take the example of uh, polio, Dobun uh, Jindagiki. Right now, uh, take the example of Swachhata uh, uh, Mission, uh, Clean India Mission and in where you will find that big stars are coming uh, in advertisement and they are marketing uh, the social idea like a product and that's why you will find that government has started spending more on social marketing right so there are various examples discourage tobacco smoking encourage use of seat belts stop drinking and driving so these were certain examples uh, where you will find that a social marketing approach was uh, adopted Right. So when we uh, talk about social marketing, then certainly marketing has uh, several uh, steps and you have to follow all those steps. Right. And uh, first you have to uh, do audience segmentation, then market research, then product development, incentives, facilitation to maximize the target group response. These are five points which are audience segmentation means that uh, if you are having a social idea, suppose uh, uh, of using seat belt or uh, or uh, uh, encouraging people to follow uh, traffic rules, suppose this is your idea, then certainly you have to segment your audience according to different uh, segments. Uh, for example, for uh, young people, uh, you would have different strategy. For old people, you would have different strategy. Uh, for two-wheeler owners, you will have different strategy. Those who have cars, you should have different strategies. Strategy. So audience segmentation, because you are going to market your uh, social idea, then certainly you will have to segment uh, the audience according to various uh, different groups uh, as per your uh, I mean, need or requirement. So audience segmentation is important. And uh, after that, you will do market research. Market research means that you will go to the society and you will find that what is the missing link? Why people are not uh, mm, uh, adopting new idea? Why people are uh, behaving in a manner which, which they should not behave? So you will, you will try to find out the missing link. What is uh, lacking? Uh, it may be that they, they, they are not aware, it may be they are aware, but they don't want to do that. Uh, so there are various factors. You will In advertisement, you will find that uh, sometimes we use fear factor also, right? Uh, just for example, take the example of tobacco, use of, uh, I mean, discouraging use of tobacco. Here you will find that advertisers are using fear factor. They show very, I mean, disturbing uh, images and uh, they show you uh, that what will happen if you will not uh, stop using tobacco. So uh, various factors. So, so many times we find that people know a thing, thing but they don't uh, want to adopt that. Uh, sometimes they don't have knowledge. Sometimes they have uh, social support. Sometimes they uh, don't have uh, certain, uh, they, they must, there must be some cultural barrier or social barrier or uh, there must be some customs which are stopping them uh, in doing so. So uh, you will have to go and to, to, to the society and you have to do a research to find out the missing link, why people are not adopting the idea. After that, you will develop the product. It means development of the social message, which kind of message will affect them more, right? So, and then incentives. You will also t uh, tell them that what, is, what will be the benefits if they adopt this idea. And the last point is facilitation to maximize the target group's response. And you will have to facilitate the feedback also. You will have to take feedback of the people also, the target groups also, so that you can uh, understand that what is the problem, why they, they, they don't want to adopt it, right? Um, and uh, if now you people are uh, reading uh, in this uh, paper and you are getting all these ideas, I, I want you people to conduct a social campaign inside our campus uh, to, for a cause and uh, 
go for all these steps and try to find out that uh, if you are successful or not if you are not successful what is the problem right so and uh, so you will have to uh, get feedback also and social marketers take a holistic view of the process by emphasizing four p's in the marketing chain and you will have to also think about four p's four p's is very important theory in advertisement product price uh, promotion and placement these uh, four uh, term it means uh, you have, what is the price for social messages uh, here i mean if you are uh, providing them a kind of a new idea or social messages what will be the price price for the developers and price for the consumers uh, what is your product what is your message how where do you like to place that message placement of that message and promotion you will have to promote that message right this is the holistic view of whole campaign so if you will go through all these steps and try to popularize an idea then suddenly uh, you will uh, see good result because in dominant paradigm uh, uh, this kind of steps were not there and uh, they used to believe that no people don't have knowledge that's why they don't uh, adopt uh, uh, a new idea so but here uh, idea is different here idea is to involve people idea is to give them new idea but also uh, take them take their feedback and in giving the idea you will have to follow scientific approach and scientific approach or means that all these uh, steps you will have to follow then only you will get good results so keeping view of above shared strategies communication process itself has evolved into a convergence model now communication is not a one sided kind of communication model it is a convergence model where participants create and share information in order to reach a mutual understanding right here goal is mutual understanding and this is what uh, in any communication this should be the whole idea of communication uh, i am saying something you are saying something uh, uh, i should not believe that you should accept my whole idea completely and you should not you should also not believe that i should accept your whole idea completely i may uh reject your certain idea you may reject my certain ideas and then for uh, ultimately we will reach to a mutual understanding so this is a kind of convergence model that here you will find that there is no uh i mean fixed sender or fixed receiver it means they keep changing their role sender becomes sometimes receivers and receivers sometimes become sender and this convergence model uh is designed and this convergence model is needed and why because uh, you will reach to a mutual understanding and if you reach to a mutual understanding they, then uh, it will be adopted obviously because you understand you mutually agreed that yes this is the right kind of thing and then you will adopt it so the chances of rejecting the idea is negligible so this is what and the orientation pulls informative research procedure uh, such as i mean the whole thing uh, the kind of uh, research oriented or scientific methods we are putting in here it uh, get into a research procedure you can go for focus groups you can go for audience survey you can pre test the message into communication research so all these steps you can uh, use uh, in social marketing approach focus group means you if you want to uh, see the result uh, um, if you before uh, popularizing your idea before uh, i mean uh, marketing your whole idea you may go for focus group uh, discussion or fo in focus group you will find the result whether it is uh, i mean uh, influential it is affecting the people or not so that uh, it will give you an idea that uh, mm, yes this your whole concept is good then you can go for the mass level uh, uh, marketing uh, audience survey you can go for survey also and pre-testing methods sometimes uh, before uh, marketing the whole idea you want to pre-test your message whether it is uh, good or not so you pre-test the message uh, for, to a small group and after pre-testing you see the result and then you go for the mass level uh, message dissemination right so these are certain things
and uh, because it is getting into the research kind of thing so it leads to many stages in behavior change right because uh, and cognition action behavior values at every level behavior because it is stage kind of thing it, it turns into formative research leads us to their stage theory uh, it means a stage theory what is stage theory stage theory says that behavior change as a sequence of steps with intermediate goals it means that at each level we should have some goals and as we find that it is a formative research uh, where we are uh, getting into all the research procedure then certainly uh, we will have to see the many stages of behavior and at every stages we should have some intermediate goals and it means that at cognition level we should have certain goals at action level we should have some other goals at behavior level we should have some other goal and at value level again some other goal so if we would try to uh, uh, achieve the goal at all the intermediate level then the chances of becoming successful uh, is uh, more right so uh, so that's why this dictate that communication process should also be a stage process needing different messages and approaches at each step of the behavior change process right uh, if you want to change the cognition of people then you will have a different communication process if you want people to take action then certainly you should have different con so at each level you should have uh, so whole communication process should also be in stage process because at each stage you have different goals right you can understand it uh, with a, uh, i mean uh, uh, with an example uh, take the example of uh, um, polio drops right there is a i mean in muslim community you will find that people uh, are not very interested in getting their uh, uh, kids uh, uh, polio drops reason is that they believe that uh, uh, these polio drops uh, uh, make people important uh and that's why they don't want uh, their kids to get uh, this polio drops it means where is the problem problem is that at the cognition level there is a problem they don't understand the thing why polio drops are being fed to their their children right so how to remove this kind of uh negative uh, um, thoughts uh, within them uh, you will have to uh, have different kind of communication uh, process right so first your uh, focus should be to make people uh, to change the cognitive level of the population and they must accept that no the kind of thing they believe that is wrong right so at this level you will have different kind of approach after you achieve that goal then you will you want them to uh, get their children to the centers or let the people who are uh, let the volunteer center into their house to uh, get polio drops to their kids right so now you want them to take action so for this you will have to adopt again different kind of approach right now after that you want them to change their behavior right so i mean and ultimately you will have to uh, change their values also value system with the kind of value system they have right uh, why importance is very much important in muslim community uh, because there are people uh, who believe that uh, uh, uh child is a god gift and that's why importance is not good they should not be uh, they should not get such medicine which uh, may make them important right so the, this kind of value system that no uh, uh, this is a god gift this kind of value system should be discouraged right so at each level you will have to uh, have different kind of communication approaches right so uh, this is what uh, it says now second um, strategy 
entertainment education strategies. This was also adopted in 1970s. And uh, uh, why it happened that uh, um, minimal effect hypothesis was gradually losing its charms in early 1970s. In mass communication theory, there is a minimum, a minimal effect hypothesis also that uh, uh, if you are uh, giving some information, it will affect the population. But this was uh, losing its charm. Now, why it is it is so? Because uh, there were new researches in two important theories of mass communication. One is agenda setting theory. And uh, in agenda setting theory, it is said that media sets agenda for the population. Right. Uh, right now, uh, even you will see that what kind of agenda media has. Uh, and uh, in different uh, uh, time period, you will find that the media has different agenda. And <clears throat> that's why you will find that agenda setting theory, new research has found that agenda setting showed that the mass media were very effective in, in increasing the cognition level of audience. It means if you can provide uh, uh, information regarding uh, some important agenda to the people, it uh, helps people uh, in increasing their cognition uh about the issue right so agenda setting uh, theory the researchers found that yes if you use mass media people uh, will have uh, cognition people will increase their cognition and second research was related to usage using, using and gratification theory usage and gratification theory says that uh, uh, people are not passive basically people are active if you are using a media uh, it is not like that whatever they are providing you, you will, you will consume it. No. You will use the media as per your need. You will gratify your need. Right? People have different gratification. Uh, I may be using internet for educational purpose, but you may be using internet for social context. You may be using internet for uh, uh, entertainment. So there are various uses of media and uh, people gratify differently. I may be watching TV for news, you may be watching TV for entertainment, right? So it is not that if you are providing information through mass media, people will get that and uh, it is not like that. So these two researches showed that uh, the focus but the, this all these two researches put focus on active audience members as opposed to the passive receiver a stereotype depicted in the minimal effect theory as till now we, you understood that uh, with these two researches it was proved that this uh, is not passive audience is basically active they are actively involved in consuming media contents right so uh, in Eugene gratification theory, audience members actively select media products to satisfy a range of products according to their need, entertainment, inter uh, new information, news, relaxation, and more, whatever. You, you might be relaxing while watching the TV. You are very, uh, bo you are getting bored and uh, you just switch on your TV and you want to relax by watching some uh, content on TV. So there are various gratification. Uh, of media content you cannot uh, ensure that people will get the thing you are uh, you want them to get right so these two researches prove that audience is active they are not passive right so a parallel development in the third world has been the trend towards increasing commercialization and privatization of television radio channels and at the same time we'll find that uh, commercialization took place, privatization was in place, and television, various television channels and radio channels came in India. Right? So, these concomitant developments have provided a fertile ground for the growth and popularity of entertainment education programs. So, because people are active, now you know through researches that people are active, and now you also know that yes, TV channels are, probably, uh, are widespread. Uh, and uh, that's and then uh, entertainment education programs become important. It means that you provide uh, some educational idea, some good idea of social change, the idea which is required uh, for growth of your economy, the idea which is required for the social change, 
<clears throat> in in entertaining way you make a serial uh, right uh, you make a program which is very much entertaining and through that program you want to educate the people right so these kind of uh, thing were, were also tried in 1970s uh, both social marketing approach and this entertainment education programs both were tried uh, at the same time right so uh, in this approach educational content is embedded in entertainment programs in media as the radio television records videos and folk theater so everywhere you will find that yes uh, social messages econo uh, messages uh, for uh, development all these were uh, somehow embedded with the uh, radio and television programs so that people may get idea and there were various serials in india also um, uh, in 1980s you will find uh, serials like hum log uh, where it was uh, people uh, serials as nukkar uh, bunyad uh, these were some serials which were very much popular uh, during 1980s and uh, all these serials have certain goals like bunyad was based on uh, the uh, com communalization of our society, Hindu Muslim diets, and all these things. And, and the Bunyad tried to make people understand that this kind of uh, communal idea is not good for the society. Again, in uh, Nukkar, you will find that uh, uh, how uh, migrant people, uh, lower middle class people, uh, live in a city and what kind of problem they face and how should they deal with all these problems so nuka tried to give them another kind of perspective towards understanding of their situation so i mean these were certain programs uh, these are these are these are certain examples uh, in india which tried to uh, provide them and uh, the idea which are necessary for the change i mean several movies also at that time how many people have no you you notice that there was a movie mother india how many of you have uh, watched that movie i don't know but uh, if you watch that movie you will find that a, a farmer who is suffering from the atrocity of the jamindar and uh, who is very poor i will find that he has uh, kids three four kids and uh, but in the other another hand you will find that the jamindar uh, the landlord uh, he has uh, only one girl child and he is very happy so uh, and that movie was uh, made in 1960s i think so think about the kind of uh, message this movie tried to give to the population and at individual level they influence awareness attention and behavior towards a socially desirable objective and at a larger, they serve as an agenda setter. You know, I mean, all these serials, all these movies, they set agenda for the society. No, this is needed. This is required, right? And at individual level, it is awaiting you that you adopt this idea. You get attentive. And if you get attentive, then certainly it, it may help you to in changing your behavior, right? So this is how these two approaches worked entertainment education programs represent a unique kind of social marketing where pro social ideas are marketed within media products results shows primarily cognitive changes though some changes have been recorded that require behavior and value shift all these things we have discussed now uh, criticism of dominant paradigm because all these uh, things were related to dominant paradigm so let us see what is the problem the dominant paradigm rationality and progress are synonymous with economic rationality and growth as articulated by the elites of note by multilateral organizations controlled by such elites simply you, you may understand this thing by this that and progress are synonymous with economic rationality if you are rational in economic affairs then you are rational if you are your economy is growing then it is becoming developed so growth is synonymous to development. It does not matter that whether that growth is being fairly distributed among population or not. If your country is becoming richer and population or majority of population is getting poorer, then what is the point in growing uh, your economy? So uh, dominant paradigm does not uh, deal with this kind of thing. 
right so this is the first criticism a higher and higher standard of living as quantified by indicators such as per capita income per capita consumption and gnp consumption key goal so key goal of government paradigm is that per capita income should increase per capita consumption should increase uh, gross national product gnp gross national product should increase and if it is it is happening then uh, you, know, you are becoming developed so these are key goals other things which are very important for societal development which are equality justice uh, freedom all these things human rights which are very distribution of wealth uh, minimum uh, requirement of the population yeah, minimum fulfillment of the requirement all these things were important but these were education uh, these are certain things which were important but uh, these were uh, not uh, adopted by dominant paradigm and the dominant paradigm the key goal were just increase increase in per capita income per capita consumption and all this the bias is not necessarily the well-being of an individual or community but well having that denotes maximum material consumption you know I mean, here is not the, the the focus of the dominant paradigm is not well-being of the people and well-being of the individual. The focus is on well-having. You must have all the necessary things, material things, cars and all those uh, flats, lands, money, all these things you should have. But uh, focus is not on well-being. What I mean in Bhutan, if they are coming up with happiness index, their focus is not on well-having, their focus is on well-being. So dominant paradigm lacked it. They also always focused on well-having. It did not focus on well-being of the society or well-being of an individual. You, you want to change this individual. You want to change the uh, individual's value system, behavior, everything you want to change. But uh, for what? For well-having. So this is the criticism uh, of dominant paradigm. Assumption and images of modernity and progress as exported from the industrialized West have been uncritically accepted by the leaders of many recipient countries. Right. What is modernity? The kind of images of modernity which is in Western countries, which is in uh, what progress, what it means in Western countries, all of those things were uh, brought in our country. Right. And that's why you will find that you will go, you go to the urban centers, you go to the metropolitan city, people behave uh, actually like Westerners, right? Uh, and uh, in behaving uh, like that, they believe that they are uh, uh, developed, in, they are uh, progressive, right? So, uh, and if you uh, support in urban centers, in metropolitan countries, you don't speak English, you don't, uh, uh, if you don't dress like an, uh, a Westerners, you don't go on, go in MACD and uh, go on cafe coffee day and CCD and all barista, uh, you don't go there, right? You don't go for in restaurant uh, for dinner and all these things. You don't show off your money or you don't uh, organize parties, then you are not developed. You are you are you are not progressive. This is what uh, is uh, what is, what conceived by our population. Why? Because Western population, uh, um, their culture is like that. They believe in such kind of activities, and that's why we also accepted those activity. We don't understand that uh, this kind of activity is not needed in our society, as we already have so many festivals in our country. In every month, we have festivals. Right, and in the, those festivals, you can enjoy with your family members in a different way. Right, so the kind of model, and that, and you will find that so many people have stopped coming, uh, uh, celebrating the uh, festivals we used to celebrate uh, earlier. Right, so this is what I mean, the one of the criticism of dominant paradigm. These assumptions frequently have overruled other analysis, such as folk scientific description of nature. Right. So these assumptions that modernity is what is believed in Western countries, these have overruled other analysis. Other analysis means that folk scientific description of nature. Our lifestyle was very much associated with nature. Think about those people, those tribal people of Andaman Nicobar. 
islands when tsunami came these people were already uh, knowing that yes something is coming and they went to the hilltop and they were least affected people so this kind of understanding of nature this kind of living a standard lifestyle uh, with nature all these things were overruled by dominant paradigm and this is again another criticism and now what we are uh, doing we are again going back and we are trying to understand our nature again they are, we are uh, trying to protect our nature we are trying to protect our earth so uh, that kind of thing dominant paradigm suggested uh, all those things uh, are proving wrong now, now uh, today right so the prior histories of developing countries had been considered irrelevant to the enterprise of modernization okay all the historical background social background all were considered uh, irrelevant and that's why they were not taken care of uh, communities had been stripped of their histories and cultures and a technocratic plan has been constructed for their future right forget your culture forget your history and the kind of plan technical plan i am giving you just adopt it and it will construct your future this kind of idea dominant dominant paradigm brought to the uh, society the subjects of development are treated in a historical vacuum that precludes any analysis of previous initiatives and their harmful effects and that's why we will find that as historical background was i mean uh, totally rejected and that any analysis related to what we have done in history what wrong steps we took in uh, past and those analysis should have helped us in getting development right so those these because we, you are not considering historical background so certainly uh, if you will not analyze the what uh, previous initiatives uh, were harmful uh, were wrong right so these kind of initiative these kind of things uh, were not uh, done uh, in uh, under dominant paradigm so this is another problem development concepts initiatives and their presumed benefits have been guided by master geographies constructed by the dominant states and institutions right i mean all those western dominant states they created the idea of uh, development uh, thus notions such as the third world north south have become stereotypes right so the, these are stereotypes kind of thing third uh, one one day prashottam was also asking that why this kind of uh, nomenclature but uh, that's why it is stereotype it has no meaning right north south divide third world country second world country these notions were created by dominant paradigm basically poorer enclaves within third world countries were incorrectly viewed as death receivers of developed assistance and it was believed that uh, those poorer countries who are in third world country they will get the benefits but in uh, actually uh, countries which belong to the uh, middle states like country like india in uh, in third world countries those country who are more developed uh, they get uh, more benefits not those countries who are very poor right so the the irrelevance of history leads to social problems that are interpreted as occurring naturally rather than as outcomes of politics mismanagement corruption greed or the exercise of power right so social problem we always thought that uh, social problems uh, whatever social problems we have it is natural problems uh, people have no idea people are uh, have no knowledge that's why these problems uh, are uh, still in the society and this they, they believe that it is natural problems if they will get new idea these problems will go away but uh, they never th thought that all these problems may be the reason uh, of uh, wrong politics maybe the reason of mismanagement corruption exercise of power all these things we are facing right now uh, so the corruption and all these things have harmed our country more rather than uh, people uh, less knowledge right so natural hazards such as famine and drought for example are not regarded as possible outcomes of policy failure or the crisis of capitalist modernization ventures so all the and if you study uh, freedom uh, moments in our country you will find that there were famine uh, very famous famine of bengal when uh, at that time britishers thought uh Britishers kept uh, exporting grains uh, to foreign countries uh, and they never focused on how to 
uh, I mean, uh, uh, give them food, the feminine affected people, how to uh, give assistance to assistance to the feminine affected people. And reason was simple that they never thought that this problem may be reason of their uh, wrong policies. Uh, right. So these are certain, uh, I mean, uh, criticism of domain paradigm. These are references. Uh, sir, what is the difference between alternative uh, paradigm and uh, social marketing approach? Because uh, feedback was also in uh, alternative paradigm. Uh, alternative, alternative paradigm, we will come to alternative paradigm. These are not alternative paradigm. These paradigms were developed under dominant paradigm. These strategies were adopted under dominant paradigm, right? Because they, they saw that dominant paradigm, the kind of policy they were adopting, it is not working. That's why they changed their strategies and they tried to uh, incorporate these two strategies. Uh, one through social marketing and another through entertainment education program. Uh, and, uh, and that's why, because uh, they incorporated also the feedback kind of thing also that we, they must have. Because uh, if you, you are introducing marketing kind of thing, you will have to adopt all the steps uh, involved in marketing a product and that's why they had to uh, introduce feedback kind of thing but uh, again you will find that they are getting feedback here but it is not participatory it is not participatory the idea the product the messages is developed by sender only it's developed by the uh, people who are involved in message making those people who believe that they have a uh, good idea and they this idea must be adopted by the masses right so now they are not um, ideas are not being constructed through participation an alternative model we will find that participatory approach is being adopted right so uh, alternative model we will come to that alternative model <laughs>